Hello and welcome everybody, King Demps here bringing you a little preview of the FunSpark Ulti 2021 Finals. Now, this is a pretty interesting event I think to kick off the year. We've got a range of the teams attending from the second best team of last year in the form of Gambit. Pretty much clear one and two with Na'Vi. Na'Vi obviously a good distance ahead of Gambit for last year. And then we've got some teams who... This year, probably are going to be looking to press on and claim a sort of top five spot, maybe look to win some tournaments in Astralis, Entropic, and maybe to a slightly lesser degree, but still I would put in that bracket of Fnatic. And then we've got some teams that it's a little bit harder to know what to expect from. Um, we've got Big and Extra Salt who have made roster changes and it's hard to pin exactly where they're going to be. Uh, and then we've got K23 and Ecstatic, who are two up-and-coming teams who are going to be looking to kind of bust into that top 20 and make inroads in top events this year. So it's a really, really cool mixture of teams. We've got some more established ones, some more upcoming ones. We've got some more um, stable rosters. We've got some ones that have recently changed. So it's a really cool melting pot, and I think we're going to see a pretty interesting tournament arise from it. And basically, I'm just going to go through each team one by one and assess where exactly i think they are coming into this year as this is the first tournament of the year and basically just give you an overview of the team and, and how i think they're going to do at this tournament obviously we will kick things off with the favorites for this event and that is gambit now gambit were obviously the second best team of last year i don't think there is any debate for that if you look at their resume just here we can scroll through it they won IEM Katowice, uh, that was the first really stacked event of the year, a very good win. A couple of top twos at ESL Pro League and DreamHack Masters. They won Epic League, they won IEM Summer, they won the Blast Spring Final, and they came second at the Star Ladder RMR. Now, this kind of run at the start of the year here, um, a really, really incredible stuff, and they showed some great form, and they were undisputedly the best team in the world at that exact moment. Nobody wanted to play them. They would beat pretty much anyone they played in the series except for Na'Vi. They were the only team that really could hang with Gambit at this time. Um, and just Shiro, an incredible Orper, incredible Clutcher. Axile, super excellent rifler who was very self-sufficient. He would often make plays on the other side of the map to his team and didn't require too many resources being put into him. A lot of timing-based plays, that sort of thing. And just generally, they worked really well as a team. Around Cologne, they started to drop off. And in the second part of the year, they weren't quite as successful. As you can see, still one of the elite teams. They won the IM full CIS admittedly the final didn't mean anything in that game and they won v4 which was a slightly smaller well i say smaller land it was a slightly less stacked field at that land but they did still have to be entropic in a best of five final and obviously they came second in the final event of the year which kind of sealed their finishing the year in that number two spot in the world now Gambit should basically be coming into this event looking for a win. They need to state their credentials as a credible threat to Na'Vi. They are the only team who are seen as in and around that Na'Vi level alongside like G2, Vitality. I don't know, maybe you want to suggest the new Astralis are going to be in that bracket. Who knows? But they're basically the only team that didn't make changes coming into this year. Obviously, Vitality brought in the Astralis trio. Obviously, G2 have signed Mon Monacy uh, and potentially Alexi B. Obviously, Astralis brought in Config and Blame F. All of the other top teams in the world, except for Heroic and probably the only other one, made major changes because of how far ahead Na'Vi seemed at the end of last year. They just looked basically insurmountable. Obviously, Gambit did manage to take a map of them in that Blast Global Final, but either way, the series was never really under threat. And so basically, they should be coming into this event looking for a convincing win. There's no Na'Vi, there's no G2, there's no Vitality, there's none of the other truly elite teams from last year attending this event. I think Gambit should be looking to come into this one and kick it off with nothing less than a convincing win. So I do tip Gambit to take this trophy home. Next up, we have Astralis, the next highest ranked team at the event. And Astralis's last year was a bit of a mess. There is no other way to put it. Obviously, they started the year reasonably well with the top two at the Blast Premier Global Final. But after that, it went immediately downhill. And obviously... 
in April, they, or was it in May? Can't remember exactly, but they lost to Vice early on in the year and they never really recovered. A brief mini revival at IEM Cologne was a bit of a false dawn and throughout the whole year, they kind of had roster issues. They were toying with the sixth man. Was it Zipnix? Was it going to be Bubsky? Who was going to play full-time? Even Glaive took some time off from the team. And even when they did eventually bring Lucky in to be the Orpa, it wasn't really working. Um, of course, Lucky is not going to hit the same heights as Device. Definitely not immediately after coming into the team. And they struggled to really find a balance, Astralis. They struggled to find a way to make the players that they had on the team at the time work. And obviously, by the end of the year, by this full final, the switch that had been rumoured for a long time was made. Um, Magisk and Dupree and Zonic were out. And in came Config, Blame F and Ave as the coach. Now, obviously, at this Brass Premier full final, we'll just have a quick look at it. Uh, everything went pretty well for this Astralis roster. They made a run all the way to piss off. They made a run all the way to top four, where they lost to Vitality, who ended the year as kind of the second best team in the world. And they looked pretty good in doing it. Config was banging. Blame F was banging. Everything looked pretty good. Now, obviously, the goals for this roster are to reach the heights that Astralis are known for to try and do what the Astralis lineup before could sort of do. <sighs> Honestly, they probably don't have a roster that is capable of doing that right now. I'm not sure that Glaive is good enough of an AWPA to be a primary AWPA in Tier 1 right now. We saw last year that Amanek was kind of an issue for G2. He wasn't a consistently strong enough AWPA in a meta that requires a strong AWPA. And so I think Astralis are going to suffer a bit of the same problems because Lucky showed he probably wasn't quite capable of doing it yet. Glaive, I don't think is capable of doing it either. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens with the AWP with Astralis. And just in general across this five-man roster, I don't think it's quite enough to get the kind of success that the original Astralis core, the Astralis core that from 2018 to 2020 was the best team in the world, won 20 titles, won three majors back to back to back. There's just no way I can see this roster doing that sort of damage. Now, they are definitely going to be a competitive roster. I think they're going to be a top 10, possibly a pop, top 5 roster as this 5. Even with Lucky in the lineup, I can see them doing that. And at an event like this, I think they need to be aiming to mount a serious, incredible title challenge. I think they need to be getting to the grand final. They need to be challenging Gambit. They need to be making a serious statement at this event because... After that blast performance where they made third place, it kind of looked a little bit wobbly for Astralis after that. It really did look like that it was just a flash in the pan, a bit of a honeymoon, that blast event. And it looked difficult to see where, where this team was going to go in the future. So I think here they need to really, really look to be reaching towards the high standards that this roster and not this roster, sorry, that this organization are known for. So I think it's finals or bust here for Astralis and they should be disappointed with anything else. That, of course, brings us to Entropic. Now, Entropic would probably be the revelation of last year, if not for Gambit. Gambit obviously came out of nowhere to challenge and be the best team in the world, basically, for the first few months of 2021. Entropic didn't ever quite reach the same heights. But they did steadily chug a long through 2021. They started off with a different org in Windstrike, didn't even have a full team. But once they got Forrester and Crad in the lineup, they slowly started to climb their way through the rankings. And as you can see here, by the back half of the year, they were consistently placing well at most of the tournaments they attended. They were winning some of these smaller events, these tier two events, clearly showing that they are a cut above that tier two competition in general. And they made some decent runs at some larger events, obviously coming second at this V4 festival ahead of Big, ahead of Fiend, ahead of Movistar Riders. Again, firmly putting themselves in the conversation as a solid top 20 slash top 10 team. Obviously, they finished the year and peaked at number nine in the rankings, as you can see here. Now... What do we expect from this roster? It is not clear if we've hit the ceiling just yet with this roster. If we take a look at one of their matches from the back end of last year, 
this game against Gambit at the V4 Future Sports Festival. They lost this 1-3-2. Honestly, in some of the maps, like this Dust 2, and actually this Vertigo and Ancient, they're not as close as they maybe look on paper. Gambit were kind of pretty comfortably winning all of these maps, and definitely Dust 2. They blew Entropic out of the water on this Dust 2. But for a half of this overpass, we'll just go look here. As you can see, for a half of this overpass, they were utterly dominant. And the Mirage, they won pretty comfortably. It kind of looked like potentially this five-man lineup could be on the level of, like, for example, a Gambit. Maybe Entropic if they find a way to kind of maintain the peak level that they have shown then they could genuinely be a top five team in the world. I think that's not out of the question with this roster. We just don't know yet where the ceiling is. They haven't had enough time to tell us whether this sort of ninth place, this top 10, whether that is as far as they can go with this five-man lineup. I think it's totally fair to put Entropic in pretty much the same bracket as Astralis. They need to be looking to challenge Gambit for the title. They should be saying grand finals or bust for us at an event like this. And this is a chance for them to show that they are a legitimate threat to the top five teams in the world. They need to be beating a team like Astralis if they want to do that. And they need to be seriously challenging Gambit if they want to be a team like that. I think the V4 Future Sport Festival final showed that they can. They can do that type of damage. They can get to the finals of these tournaments, beat out the other sort of top 10, top 15, top 20 teams pretty comfortably, and then give Gambit a run for their money. I think we need to see a development now. We need to see them really genuinely threaten to take this final away from Gambit, if not win it. So I think they're in the same boat as Astralis. I think it's finals or bust for Entropic. They shouldn't be happy with anything less. Next up is Fnatic, the Smooya iteration of Fnatic. And ever since they added Smooya towards the back end of last year, this Fnatic roster has looked legit. They have been banging out tier two opposition in these qualifiers. They obviously won DreamHack Open, which was no joke of a tournament. There were some decent teams in attendance here. You know, teams like Big, Mad Lions, Ents, all of these are, are, are very decent opposition. And Basically, Fnatic winning this event kind of pipped themselves up there as a clear, definitely better than Tier 2, and they're going to do some damage at the very least in Tier 1. They actually went on a streak just after putting this roster together of 12 map slash series wins in a row. The only teams they've actually lost to with this lineup so far are Copenhagen Flames. They lost an 0-2 series in, let's see what it was. What event was it? It's actually not even on here, the 0-2 series they lost against Copenhagen Flames. It was in a smaller event. Uh, and obviously they lost twice, uh, once in a uh, best of one and once in a best of three to Gambit at IEM Winter. But those signs are very, very promising. The only thing they lost at, you know, a proper event, which was IEM Winter, was against Gambit, who are the second best team in the world right now and were the second best team of last year. So very, very positive signs from this Fnatic roster at the end of 2021 and coming into 2022. Now, this kind of event is actually perfect for a roster like this, like Fnatic, where they've shown lots of promise. There's a lot of signs pointing towards the fact that they could be a top 10 team. This is the perfect type of event when you've had a bit of time off, a bit of time to practice, a bit of time to settle the roster down after a honeymoon period to see exactly where you are at as a team. You've got one of the best teams in the world, Gambit. You've got a couple of really good and promising top 10 teams in Astralis and Entropic. You've got a couple of up and coming top 20 teams that you should really be beating if you want to be top 10. We've got Ecstatic and K23. And then you've got a couple of question mark rosters in the form of, I think, Big and Extra Salt. It's tough to know exactly where they are going to be coming into the start of the year. And basically, if you're looking at this as like a warm-up event for 2022, if you're a team like Fnatic, this is perfect. Good range of teams, all different types and sizes and shapes. You get to really test yourself out against a range of opposition. Now, I think this Fnatic team are not quite in the same boat as Entropic and Astralis. I think in terms of my personal expectations, I would put them in the same bracket. I think Astralis, Entropic and Fnatic all have a great chance of making the final, all have a great chance of challenging Gambit for this title. But I think Fnatic, because their roster is a little bit, because their roster is fresh, their roster doesn't quite have the same expectations from an organizational standpoint as a team like Astralis. I think there is a little bit less pressure 
to do so well at this event. I think top four is probably the must here. I think they could forgive themselves not making the final. I think as long as they play well, as long as they beat the teams they should be beating, and as long as they're competitive against the Astralis and Tropic Gambits of this event, then I think it's a success for Fnatic. But to summarize two kind of ways to put this in expectation sense the same as astralis and entropic i think in terms of what is acceptable for the roster they can accept top four they can accept not getting to the final maybe a little bit more so than entropic or astralis could but i'm expecting good things from Fnatic next year i really am next up we have big obviously a new look big who have just subbed out gade for farven who is an up and coming german prospect previously been playing on sprout and it's actually very, very tough to know exactly what to expect from this Gambit roster. Obviously, ever since the peaks of being number one in the world during the online era with Xantares, it has basically been a slow but steady decline. They've kind of just slipped steadily down the rankings. And now they're kind of sitting at that 15, 16, 14 area they're a top 20 team, they are better than tier 2, but they are struggling to go deep and consistently beat top 10 and tier 1 opposition. And that's kind of been the story of Big ever since they lost Santares. The main issue being, I know I'm going to sound like a broken record because I've said this a few times about this big squad, was just firepower. They just didn't win enough duels to be able to go deep in these tier one events and even some of the smaller events v4 future sports festival they didn't go particularly deep at that one they only made top four which is probably the bare minimum that they should be expecting and the second they came up against the decent team in the form of gambit they fell to that team now obviously big have sought to remedy that major issue of theirs of firepower by bringing in young prospect from the german scene farven supposedly in a deal the size of which has not been seen in german counter-strike so i admire the ambition from big it looks like they spent a little bit of money they went out and they got the one person in the german scene who potentially could offer what they needed which was just more fragging and more firepower now if we look at these numbers it seems pretty apparent that farven has been banging for sprout consistently hitting 0 0.8 0 0.9 sort of kpr figures which is excellent hitting some very good differentials admittedly these are not at the premiere events these are often not even quite at tier 2 level so it's tough to say whether Farvin is going to make the transition from the level that Sprout have been playing at to the level that Big are playing at. However, I think you have to look at it as definitely possible because he will be getting resources on this team. There's no doubt about it. Him and Searson are going to be the focal points of this team. Obviously, Tabson can't carry the fragging from an IGL role, but he still frags very well by and large. So there is definitely some evidence here that, to me, points to the idea that this big lineup could definitely be an improvement. I would expect them almost certainly to be an improvement on the previous big because, quite frankly, even if Farvan doesn't bang out like he has been for Sprout, he doesn't need to frag that much to kind of bring this big up. He doesn't need to frag that hard to get this big team to improve. He really doesn't. Um, I think fragging was such a huge issue for Big, who kind of structurally looked pretty solid. The map pool was decent. It, it literally was just clicking enough heads that was a problem for Big. I think to summarize, Big are a huge unknown at this event just because we know what to expect from the previous iteration of Big and we know what their problem was. The thing is, Farvan is is a huge variable. He could go really, really ham. He seems to have the potential and the skills to do so. Or he could struggle to adapt at Tier 1 straight away. I don't think Big need to be expecting to win this event, anything like that. I think this is very much just going to be a free swing for this big squad. It's going to be a good barometer to see where exactly they are at. And it is a good chance for Farvan to get his feet wet again against a nice range of opposition and i think this is just going to be a litmus test for big to kind of see what their level is like as they come in off of the player break with a bit of practice under their belts
Next up, we have this ecstatic side, which is a very interesting roster. We have a Danish core, we have a Dutch player, and we have an American slash Swedish slash whatever Wolfie is. I think he prefers to be considered an NA player at heart. Now, I did a piece on Ecstatic actually recently for HLTV where I interviewed Bird from Sky. I will link that one down in the description. And basically, ever since Ecstatic put together this lineup with Fasha and Wolfie, they've kind of been on a tear and have been absolutely ripping up tier one events. If we go and have a look here, this is just from the time where they've been under the name Ecstatic. Obviously, previously they were Lingby Vikings, but... As you can see, winning Pinnacle 4 Series, placing top two at the Fun Spark and the Malta Vibes. They fell off a little bit right at the very end of the year, but understandable. They'd kind of gone on a, a very long grind through the back half of the year. These Tier 2 teams are playing a lot of events, a lot of smaller tournaments. But they've also picked up some pretty nice scalps along the way. Um, obviously, here you can see they've beaten Entropic, they've beaten Extra Salt, they've beaten Mad Lions. They've beaten some pretty solid Tier 2 slash in the form of, obviously, Entropic Tier 1 opposition in recent times. Now, and if we just look at these ratings... Um, it's obvious who the three kind of main players are. It's Fasha, it's Manx, and it's Wolfie. From what I've seen when looking at them, Fasha and Wolfie seem to be the kind of star players who go off a little bit more, whereas Manx is slightly more of a stable presence. But basically, this team seems to have a pretty nice balance. I think their calling seems to be very solid. They they play like very much like a Danish core. It's very solid. It is very fundamentally sound Counter-Strike. Um, they seem to have some skills in this lineup, and actually, these guys are my dark horses for an event like this. I think they could surprise, they could make top four, they could upset one of the bigger teams at this event, if they are underestimated. I think it's Static are a legitimate team. I'm excited to see what they can do in 2022. I think having broken into the top 20 at the end of last year... Hopefully, they're only on the rise. I'm looking forward to what I am going to see from Ecstatic in the near future. I think you guys should too. Now, next, sitting just outside the top 20 in the world as of right now, we have K23. This used to actually be a Kazakh core. Uh, it involved Mo and Adren, previously of Gamba, Gamba? Gambit Major winning fame. Obviously, they do not have that roster anymore. Towards the back end of last year, they kind of stagnated in terms of their development and they switched out the two aforementioned players for XE Power and X5G7V. Like, sort your name out, dude. Seriously, what, what is that? Why am I reading like the serial number for a motherboard? And ever since they made the roster switch that I mentioned, they've looked actually pretty good. They've won some lower tier events. Obviously, the previous two Fun Spark Ulti events, they won both of them, which was a large reason of how they qualified for this Fun Spark Ulti finals. And I'll be perfectly honest, I don't know the most about this K23 roster. They are the team on this team list that I know the least about. Um, obviously, in their roster, Norbert has been the star player for K23 for the longest time. However, Exapower has definitely come in and brought more impact and more regular carry potential from the AWP role, it would seem. And so I like the balance of this K23 lineup. Fame is somebody that Electronic recently in his top 20 interview pipped to be a future star player. So if you look at Fame and Norbert as kind of that rifle duo who are going to do a lot of the numbers for you, if you see Exit Power as something of a star AWPer, then this team starts to look pretty nice in terms of balance and how they play out in terms of roles on the server so don't know a lot about this team perfectly willing to put my hands up and say that however i do think from what i've seen from them particularly watch them a little bit during the iem fall in the cis they look like they can definitely be a dangerous team and i definitely would not write them off at this event i think the beauty of this event is it does look like any of the teams can be any on their given day. And I definitely think there's going to be some interesting series going down. I expect K23 to be dangerous and I don't think they should be underestimated by any means. Now, last but by no means least, we have Extra Salt soon to be complexity. If the rumours are to be believed, we will wait and see on that front. 
Now, it's difficult to know exactly what we're going to get from Extra Soul. Obviously, losing OC is a huge blow for this lineup. OC was the best player for Extra Soul. He is a legit looking AWP talent. I think he's going to do some damage in Tier 1 with Liquid. So, there's no two ways about it. That is obviously a blow for this Extra Salt lineup. However, the lineup they have now put together, adding Grim, a good player with Tier 1 experience, is only going to be a benefit. Adding Junior, he seems like he has a lot of talent if he is yet a bit raw compared to OC. If we look at Junior's numbers and statistics, generally he's banging out, but it's in sort of like Tier 3 really events, like sort of Tier 2 he's done okay. He looked pretty crap in his time on Furia, but he wasn't given the resources, so... Junior's a question mark, clearly got talent. We'll see what he can do with this extra salt lineup. Um, Floppy obviously bangs. Fang has obviously shown the potential to bang. There's a lot of talent definitely in this roster. If a little bit raw, a little bit young, you can see the average player age is not even 22. But this extra salt lineup, I think, has potential. There's no doubt about that. I think this event will be similar to Big. For extra salt i think it's going to be a barometer i think they are going to be using it to settle in to see exactly where they are at with this lineup to kind of feel out the roles how the team is going to balance out i expect them to be capable of doing damage there's too much talent i think on this lineup between floppy grim junior and fang there's enough talent and fragging there to cause damage on their day I'm not expecting too much from them at this event particularly, but I think moving forward, we can definitely expect this lineup to hopefully develop and give NA another legitimate threat at tier one level. We'll have to wait and see though. So just a quick summary of what I expect to see at this event. I expect to see Gambit win it. I expect to see Fnatic, I'll be honest, in the final with Gambit. I do think they are going to beat out Astralis and Entropic in on that front. I expect to see uh, a top four of Astralis and probably Entropic joining Fnatic and Gambit in that top four. Although I very much could see Ecstatic causing an upset and making it into the top four at the expense of probably Astralis. I'm kind of not fully sold on this Astralis five yet, but we'll see where it goes. Um, as for the rest of the field, I definitely think they can cause damage and take some upsets. I think Extra Salt and Big are the two biggest question marks because of the roster changes and the difficulty in pegging exactly where they're going to be with those changes. I think Astralis, because of what they showed at Blast, despite their changes, you can say a little bit more confidently where they might potentially be at. Any which way this falls, I think it's going to be a super fun event and I am looking forward to it. I hope you all are as well. The return of Tier 1 Counter-Strike, baby! I hope you enjoyed the video. Like, comment, favorite, and subscribe if you did. And if you didn't...